Drain You is the eighth track off of Nirvana's seminal sophomore album, Nevermind, the track originally titled Formula. It was written in 1990, and it was first recorded in 1991, but not for Nevermind. Nevermind was recorded in May of 1991, but an earlier version from April of 1991 does exist. On the way down to California, where Nirvana was going to be recording their second album, Nevermind, at Sound City Studios in Los Angeles with Butch Vig, Kurt and Dave Grohl took a stop first in San Francisco to meet with their friend Dale Crover. Dale Crover, of course, being the drummer from the Melvins, a longtime friend of Kurt's, and one of the drummers in Nirvana at various points in time. Kurt, Dave, Dale Crover, and Dale Crover's girlfriend, Debbie Shane, recorded a bunch of demos together, including an early version of Drain You. Take a listen to what Debbie Shane had to say about that recording session. Quote, We went to the practice space my band Dumbhead shared with the Melvins for two days. Kurt announced he had a song which wasn't a Nirvana song because it didn't have a drum part. When Dale started playing drums, he, Kurt, was like, wow, we have a drum part. In addition to the drums, the instrumental interlude in Drain You was also developed during this session. When Drain You's interlude was recorded for Nevermind, Kurt made the different sounds that appear in the interlude by using things like a rubber duck, a toy mouse, chains, and an aerosol can. Andy Wallace, the studio engineer who worked on Nevermind, enhanced these sounds by adding delay effects over top of them. As Butch Vick described it, the interlude was kind of a free-form freakout. Nirvana began recording Nevermind at Sound City Studios in Los Angeles in May of 1991. According to Butch Vig, Drain You was the song that had the most guitar overdubs than any other song on the album. In Butch Vig's own words, he said that the multiple guitar tracks were, quote, blended and panned to give it, Drain You, a very kinda, almost orchestral sound with the guitars. In terms of the vocals, Kurt was never a big fan of doing multiple vocal takes, but Butch Vig felt that having multiple vocal takes would be good for Drain You. In order to get Kurt to actually do the multiple vocal takes, Butch would tell Kurt that during his takes, it didn't record properly or there was something wrong with the audio. He would basically trick Kurt into thinking that it wasn't recorded properly, so Kurt kept doing multiple vocal takes over and over and over again. Butch Vig used the same method to get Kurt to do multiple guitar tracks as well. It was his little trick. Quote, I don't know how I got Kurt to do all those guitar tracks. I think I kept saying, I think I was lying basically, saying there's a problem with the track, it didn't record properly, or it's out of tune, or something, let's just do it again. So he, Kurt, thought he was doing the same part over. Meanwhile, I just kept putting him to new tracks. So we ended up with a clean track and five distorted guitar tracks. So now it's finally sounding like a rock song. As is the case with pretty much anything from Nirvana, the lyrics to Drain You have been analyzed and people have tried to find the meaning in the song. It has been claimed that Kurt made up most of the lyrics to Drain You on the spot just before recording it for Nevermind, that he made it up in the studio itself, Sound City Studios. But if you listen to the demo that he recorded with Dale Crover in April of 91, the lyrics are pretty much the same as the ones in the Nevermind version. So the claim that Kurt made up most of the lyrics on the spot, is that accurate or is it an exaggeration? It is known for a fact that many of the lyrics in Drain You were made up on the spot, but were most of the lyrics made up on the spot? That's the question. That's where the debate comes with that one theory. What we do know for sure is that Kurt said the lyrics to Drain You made him think of, quote, two brat kids who are in the same hospital bed, and that one baby to another says, I'm lucky to have met you, is an important line. The most common belief is that Drain You is about Kurt's ex-girlfriend, Toby Vale, with the line, it is now my duty to completely drain you, apparently being a phrase she said to Kurt when they broke up. Another more dark theory is that the song is about Kurt's struggle with heroin. The line, I travel through a tube and end up in your infection, is typically cited by those who believe this song is about addiction. But it's also been pointed out that Kurt's drug addiction reference in Drain You 
may have been a metaphor for his relationship with Toby. Some have suggested that the song is actually about Kurt's youth and his relationship with his mother. Kurt's mother was just 19 when Kurt was born, and as is the case with newborn babies, they require a lot of attention, draining the energy from their mothers, so to speak. Supporters of this theory also point out that the interlude section on Drain You may be a reference to a baby being born. The interlude is a flood of confusing different sounds which gradually build up to a climax with a scream, possibly a reference to the point of view of a baby as it's being born coming out of the womb and then crying once it's finally been delivered. Definitely an interesting perspective to consider. As mentioned earlier, the line in the song, I travel through a tube and end up in your infection, is frequently cited by those who think the song is about addiction. But that line may potentially be a reference to a child being born. I travel through a tube and end up in your infection might be a metaphor for a baby traveling through a mother's fallopian tubes and being born into the world which he views as being an infected place. It's a morbid way of interpreting that lyric, but who knows? Maybe that's what the lyric really is about. In any case, Nevermind, which contained Drain You, was released on September 21st, 1991, and there were four singles from Nevermind. Smells Like Teen Spirit, Come As You Are, Lithium, and In Bloom. Drain You was not released as a single, but it still remains a popular Nirvana song. For example, it ranked fifth in Rolling Stone Magazine's poll back in 2013 of the top 10 Nirvana songs. It was 10th in The Guardian's top 20 Nirvana song. Drain You has also appeared as a track on Rock Band 2 and is available on Rock Band Greatest Hits for the PlayStation Portable. As a side note, do you prefer Rock Band or Guitar Hero? Along with Aneurysm, Drain You was one of Kurt Cobain's favorite songs to play live. A live version of Drain You was recorded at the Del Mar Fairgrounds in Del Mar, California on December 28th, 1991. This live version of Drain You appeared on Nirvana's live compilation CD from the Muddy Banks of the Wishka, which was released in October of 1996, two and a half years after Kurt's death. Drain You was released as the second promotional single from the album. It peaked at number 44 on the US Alternative Top 50 charts. Back in the 90s, and basically pre-internet, when a single was released, that meant a compilation of songs. It meant multiple songs. Usually two, maybe three, sometimes four, but it was a package of songs. For example, a single would usually have an A side and a B side. Whereas a promotional single would only have one song, it's just the song itself. In today's market, a single usually just means one song. So what we consider a single today, that is the equivalent of what a promotional single was before. Promotional singles were not listed as singles, they were two separate categories. It's a little bit confusing, especially because today we just call promotional singles singles, so when you're referencing music history, it is a little bit confusing if you're not familiar with the terminology. To date, there are six live versions of Drain You which have been released, as well as three known studio recordings. The version recorded with Dale Crover in April of 1991, the version recorded with Butch Vig for Nevermind in May of 1991, and a version recorded at the BBC in London, England on September 3rd, 1991. On the version of Drain You which appears on Nevermind, Kurt and Chris Novoselic tuned their instruments a whole step down. But when Nirvana would perform Drain You live, the song was generally played in whatever tuning the band was using during whichever tour or whatever concert they were doing. Drain You was one of Kurt Cobain's favorite songs. Kurt even claimed that Drain You was the equal or even better than Smells Like Teen Spirit. In Kurt's own words, quote, I love the lyrics of Drain You, and I never get tired of playing it. Maybe if it was as big as Teen Spirit, I wouldn't like it as much. Do you think Drain You is better than Smells Like Teen Spirit? What is your favorite Nirvana song? If you already haven't, guys, please make sure to subscribe. A lot more Nirvana videos coming. Thank you for watching. Hey, thanks for watching. My name is Daniel Sarkissian. I'm an independent filmmaker from Toronto.